the zoo is on the hunt for a new football coach, and we talk about it on today's Sports BKC, presented by Big O Tires. It's Tuesday, December 3rd. Star columnist Vahe Gregorian and Sam Melliger join me, Blair Kirkhoff, in studio to discuss the rationale behind firing Barry Odom. After a break, we talk about what we believe Missouri Athletic Director Jim Sterk will be looking for in a new coach, and hang around to close to the end of the show when I give you the person I believe best fits what Mizzou is seeking. Sam Mellinger and Vahe Gregorian are here, and we're going to talk about the Missouri football coaching position. But I want to talk about it in two ways. We, we, should, we should discuss candidates and, um, and who, who might succeed Barry Odom. But first, I want to get into the idea that a, a coaching vacancy, especially at the uh, major college football level, is an opportunity to – define or make a statement about the program based on you know, uh, what the ambitions are, the expectations are of, of, the, seat, uh, of the team and the program. Look, um, Missouri made a statement on, on Saturday by saying this coach who is a true son, right? Missouri uh, spent more than half of his life at Mizzou and was not under 500 with uh, at 25 and 25 over four seasons, was not enough for Missouri to go forward in football. Vahe, you've spent a lot of time over at Mizzou this season, and you and I talked about it last week. I think we had a split decision on what we thought would happen. Um, were you surprised by the move? Not quite, because I was pers- in the process of our split decision, I was persuaded by your argument more than mine. <laughs> 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 and, and I did also, though, it, 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 even after we recorded that, I, I talked to a few people um, in the days after that that got me thinking, this is more likely than not to happen. Um, and I think part of, I think you got into this point, Blair, but I think that this is certainly something that, that I've come to feel. It sort of wears the sizzle. Where, what are you going to sell for next year after this? This had the appearance of being a schedule and a team that would be on the high point of a cycle. And it, it wasn't that. Um, instead, it was just a non-losing season and barely. Um, I think... It sounds simplistic, but I think they would have had more of a dilemma if if they'd beaten Tennessee um, or if they'd beaten Vanderbilt. Maybe it would have just been too much to say we can't we can't fire a guy after this. Um, it's kind of interesting to think about also where the the NCAA uh, penalty came into this. If they had not been um, turned down, rebuffed on their appeal, and been granted a bowl game, would we be having this conversation right now, or would they have had to wait another month? I don't know. I don't know. It's hypothetical. I mean, I guess I kind of think we would be having this conversation now, actually, anyway. I think there would be an interim coach for yeah. Missouri I, right now if they think, were yeah. preparing for a bowl game. I think that's right. But but in, finally, I'd just say this. I, I You really had a feel for it in a way that I think I didn't. I just didn't think Missouri was at this place where they're like, okay, it's four years. You've had your time. We're, we're going. Uh, and I do think it might have looked a little different if it had been the same athletic director who hired him. He just had more invested. There are arguments to be made that, and you made them, that uh, the first season was sort of a you know, do-over, you know, you, that Barry Odom would get the, the – it was as if he was a third-year coach and not a fourth-year coach because of the problems he inherited from the 2015 team and, and season. And, again, the hiring was, I think, made in part uh, – you know, the Missouri talked to some other candidates, but they ended up hiring Barry Odom because he was Missouri. He was a Mizzou guy, and the, the it was a, it was a place that needed healing at, at the time. I, but in the end, it didn't buy him any extra you know, consideration from uh, from Jim Sterk. And you make the good point by hey, Sterk didn't hire Barry Odom. But Sam, did that make it easier for Sterk to to make the decision he did? I don't think there's any doubt, right? Like, um, and Vahe, you've written about this, about, you know, Gary Pinkle was almost in the exact same situation after his fourth year, right, like record-wise. But if the AD fired Gary Pinkle at that point, Mike Alden, um, Mike Alden would have been firing himself. That's a huge – That's. And I also think 2019 is different than 2003 or whatever the, the fourth year was. I'm getting the, the years mixed up. Um, I thought Jim Sterk was – really honest in that press conference where he basically said, you know, look, like 
we put a lot into this seat with a lot of resources, time, energy into the season with, you know, the end zone, pro like, you know, facilities and, you know, all this money that had been spent. And it was basically the coach didn't hold, you know, his weight. He didn't pull his weight on this. We set this up and, you know, Gabe DeArmond had this line that I can't get out of my head. They had a, Mizzou had a schedule this year that looked like it was set up by Barry Odom's agent, <laughs> you know, like it was set up for them to win at least eight. Yeah. And and nine maybe ten, ten games, and then you have some real momentum going forward. And you know it was it was a prove it year. I know he he had the extension um, almost exactly a year ago, right? Uh, but there's extensions and there's extensions, right? Like I think that extension just kind of lowered the pie out and you know made made this palatable. So um, you know it was, it was a prove it year, and he didn't prove it. They moved backwards. It's it's a brutal business. Um, I shouldn't use that word. Um, he's paid millions of dollars. Um, but it, it, it can be a cutthroat cold business uh, when you don't perform to expectations. I think that's what happened. And one other point to, to riff off of what you were just saying, Sam, it is different for a lot of reasons today than it was in the early Pinkle years, but it, none more so than the, the, the reality of the SEC. Yeah. And you're, you're playing in this at this level. You've made this move. It's that much more of a financial yeah. investment. And I think you can make the case – not even make the case. It's just a truism that um, urgency is is different. The timing is different. Uh, you, you, you know, the more you stand still, the more you fall behind. Yeah. Two two points. Um, it's uh, been around long enough to understand that extensions are for recruiting purposes. They totally. have nothing to do with uh, whether a school d decides the, the coach is the right fit or not. Well, with one exception is what that buyout is. Right, but but that's I think that gets folded into everything. Yeah. There are conditions that are created for the contract. Yep. I've never known a, a program in, in men's basketball or football to not make a move on the coach because of the size of the buyout or the or the contract. It just if you know there's there's too much there's too much at stake financially to keep the wrong coach. Yes, yeah, like and and nobody there's no such thing as a lame duck college coach either. Um, and and there's there's coaches. Um, that have turned down extensions because they included we're going to take that buyout down to 250 grand or whatever and that right. that means you're gone. Yes, <laughs> you absolutely. just you just signed See, your own firing. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's a, that's a thing that happens. And the, and the other point I want to make Vahe, it was it was uh, well said the SEC is a different it's just a different place. It sure is. And I'm not so sure that the move that Arkansas made in early November to fire Chad Morris had an influence on Jim Sterk's decision to fire Barry Odom, and I'm not so sure that that decision didn't affect Mississippi. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Ole right. Miss firing its coach, saying, "Oh, look, those, you know, <laughs> Missouri can do it. We'll, we'll do it too." And, they, they beat us, and they're firing their guy. Right. And, <laughs> right. He, and he's got a better record than yeah. our guy. So um, that's that's life in the SEC. It is, you know, you could you could you could say that Missouri firing a football coach with a 20, 25 and twenty five record after four years means. Mizzou has officially joined the SEC. <laughs> that's, that's well look, said. That's, that's, and you're alum. Right. With, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, one, one quick thought on that, too. Is, uh, two quick thoughts off that, Blair. One is what was going to happen if, if they did hold on to him was he was going to be one of those guys going into next season, just everybody looking for when, when the trap door is going to fall and he's out. And if there's one situation I think that's ridiculous in college sports, it's when – they fire a guy a month into a season. And that means you didn't do your job six months, eight months, ten months earlier. That's exactly I, I've right. always felt that way. Yep. So, and I think that was the wobbly kind of status he was going to have, right? I mean, maybe it would, maybe, maybe it would have started 4-0 or, or who knows, but, but I think that was the wobbly status he was going to have. Um, I guess that was the main thing I was going to say. Well, and if he, if he did come back um, – he wasn't going to have his offensive coordinator because yeah. that was that would have been a condition of him, you know, returning. Ooh. You got fired, Derek Dooley, and um, again, Vahe, you and I spoke to this last week. Would not have excited the fan base at all. How many season tickets would Missouri have not sold because of Barry Odom returning as yeah. the coach? And to me, that's what that's where the reality is for Missouri in that in the SEC, especially when we saw the crowds of the size that we did in the last few home games. <laughs> Um, look, fans are just weren't turning out anymore for this coach and this program, and they've made their you know they made their feelings known by not showing up for these games. That's 
that's um, that's that's where the fans are. You don't have to look at social media anger to know what. You know, just just look in the stands, at, at games where people who are financially invested in the program. I'm sure there were sixty sixty five thousand tickets sold to these games, but you only had forty thousand people in the stands. People were making decisions, and so I think that's what ultimately. Um, uh, help Jim Stirk make the decision that he did. I think you're right. I think in the end, it, you know, you could say the apathy speaks louder than the anger. And <laughs> and that shows up also in in what people are going to invest and uh, many other ways. For a school that's now, you know, 8 to $10 million down on bowl revenue, uh, still because, fighting because to get of the, attendance. Because and, of the probation. Other things back, yeah, because of the probation. So, so yeah, I mean, if nothing else, that it's kind of interesting, right? I mean, I don't know that we thought about it this way, but... Uh, how much this bowl ban might have affected um, the situation too? Well, they're out that money financially. We're now we're even farther behind. So there's uh, I've always thought this, but I think that it, it it speaks loudly in this situation that fans have a bigger voice in how their teams operate. You know, just functionally in college than than in the pros. I think that you know the quote unquote noise. Can have a real impact, like it, in in the NFL or Major League Baseball, NBA, whatever. If the GM and owner, the leadership group, thinks that the coach is the right guy and can win games, that's the only thing that matters 99% of the time. But in college, you're talking about donations, you're talking about you know buyouts, you're, you're talking about all kinds of things that make a re- and and you know we just saw it, maybe even even stronger than in this Mizzou situation at Rutgers. You know, the, the, when that Shiano stuff broke that, you know, uh, that the school wouldn't meet his demands, people lost their brains <laughs> and they just hired him. Yep. And and Shiano had a – he's another great example at Tennessee when uh, our old buddy uh, John, Curry. John, John Curry tried to hire him. In Tennessee, people lost their brains the other way. And, <laughs> and <laughs> whoops, we, we, we take that one back. I mean, college fans, college, you know, donors, you know, the, those people, they, they have a much bigger voice in how they're – teams operate than in the pros that's a huge great point and it really is funny how shiano represents both aspects of that <laughs> yeah. kind of thing that, yeah. that is weird you're, you're making me think of this too and i'm sure blair's going to steer us here but it, it does make me think about um what is the priority can you can you get all in one here can you get a guy that you identify as somebody who will excite the fan base right away and also is going to be a long-term guy or, or is one going to be looked at as more significant than the other in the process i mean do they need to you know excite the base here more than they need to know that you're going to win for seven eight ten years I, I i don't know maybe that's a dumb way to phrase it all right well hold that thought vahe we will talk about that after the break i want to spin it forward and talk about what what the um, what, what the new hire will say about missouri's ambition and Sort of its self-image. Uh, we'll talk about some of the candidates and, and what that uh, what it means for Missouri right after this. Big O Tires is rolling out Black Friday deals now through December 8th. Get limited time Black Friday savings on oil changes, brakes, car batteries, and more. Plus, save up to $190 on select Michelin and BF Goodrich tires when you use your Big O Tires card. With no interest financing for 12 full months OAC. Don't miss Black Friday deals happening now through December 8th, only at Big O Tires. For your nearest participating location, go to BigOtires.com. Hey, it's Blair. Hey, we have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners. Unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Stars award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns we have to offer. And it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. For your convenience, your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50 unless you tell us to cancel. A lot of subscription services won't tell you that. They'll just sneak it on there. We just told you. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. Sam Melliger and Vahe Gregorian join me, Blair Kirkhoff, talking Missouri football, uh, the coaching situation there. And before we went to break, we were talking about the 
the idea of a coaching search making a statement or defining the you know the the program or, or the self image the self image of the program I, I think as in all coaching searches we, we call it the silly season for a reason right as no sooner is a uh, is a coach fired or a coach resigns or a coach leaves a program that the hot board is posted you know within an hour usually anymore who are the likely candidates to replace that that's kind of a i don't know maybe a internet phenomenon i don't remember you know i remember back in the day before the internet you'd actually sit down to make a lot of calls <laughs> i remember that <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and put together a list of coaching prospects including calling the school to see if they've gotten permission to talk to. You know, the, none of that happens anymore. You better have something posted pretty damn quickly. And and so we did. And uh, and so did Arkansas and so did Ole Miss and so did Florida State and everybody else that's that has a coach opening right now. So the, the names that uh, that are associated with Missouri now are, generally speaking, coaches of – group of five conferences, head coaches of group of five, not, not, the, not the power five conferences, not the ACC, um, uh, SEC, Big 12, et cetera, but coaches from Sunbelt, uh, Conference USA, uh, um, Mountain West, those types of coaches. And Missouri's gone down that road before. Gary Pinkle was a MAC coach and turned out okay for Missouri there. I see that Arkansas and Florida State have coaches from Power Five conferences on their list. Uh, Justin Fuente, for instance, for uh, from Virginia Tech, supposedly on on a hot board for for Arkansas. And I, so, what 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 does this say about Missouri? And should is this the type of coach at the level of coaching that Missouri should be uh, looking for right now? Yeah. I don't know why. Arkansas in particular should be choosing from a more accomplished class of candidate than Missouri. Um, I think those are peer programs at worst, um, you know, at, at absolute worst. I've always thought that schools at ADs should take a big swing or two and, and miss before you, you know, and I, it's all about image um, in college sports and, you know, people don't like to be told no, but... I don't know, like I'd go see if Mike Leach has any interest in coaching in the SEC. Uh, you know, just do stuff like that. Because if, if you hired Mike Leach, that's a guy that would have, you know, sort of the sizzle and the steak for, you right. know, to use a corny term. I mean, it, you know, that's a guy that would get people excited, but also I think be a damn good coach and and be able to win some games. I just, I think you, you, you need to swing big before you get to the level of, you don't want the fan reaction to be like, that guy's just like Barry Odom. Why, why did we fire Barry Odom? And I'll say this too, Jim Sterk's got a lot on the line because it, it, as fed up as a lot of fans were, that was not just 100% he's got to go. That was not a, a, a David Beatty situation. Um, and if Sterk gets his guy in there and that guy doesn't, doesn't do both, doesn't initially get fans excited and also win games, people are going to think, you just ran – you know, a true son off. You just ran one of our guys off for this. You know, screw you. And then, and, and that's when it becomes Jim Sterk's job. He's. I mean, it, he also like and this is true for this is not just Jim Sterk thing, but if, if you're going to fire somebody, you better have three or four people who you're interested in, and more importantly, that you know are interested in you, or else you're just not doing your job. And I assume Jim Sterk has that. I mean, I've always believed that. I've never had an athletic director tell me that directly, but I've always believed that a coach doesn't make a move that that. Jim Sterk make made without having, you know, a list. Yeah, you well, know, list it, on an index card of uh, you know of, of pr prospective candidates. We think it might be in their wallets, just like my wadded up um, password list. <laughs> oh man! Um, yeah, you got to get that laminated or something, man. That, I've seen that. That is that is in tatters. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, you know, think about this too with Jim Sterk coming here. He's coming here after Mac Rhodes has hired Barry Odom. And what does he know about Barry Odom at that point? He's, he had to come here with a list, I guess is my point. And I yeah. think a prepared athletic director is thinking that way. Now, I'm sure that list evolves and changes, and maybe it 
doesn't really get physically scratched out and such, but, it, but, but you have to be thinking about that all the time in that job. I think any of the athletic directors we've gotten to know over the years would tell you they are always thinking about who's next. And thus, you know, sort of the, the prototype of what it is they would seek to have. Now, often in these things, we will see the pendulum swing back, right? It's going to be the anti-Barry Odom. It's going to be an offensive-minded guy who's had head coaching experience, and you'd obviously like it to be a more prominent job. I love the idea of Mike Leach. I don't know if Mike Leach is a fit. I don't know if Jim Sterk likes Mike Leach, but I'd, I'd sure like to see that explored. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting, and after all, that's what we want, you know, <laughs> yeah. interesting. Well, they, they worked um, at Pullman together, but they've both been at yeah. Pullman. Uh, yeah. So I, I imagine there are people at, at Washington State that, that uh, Jim Sturr could have talked to about, yes. about, uh, about Mike Leach. And there's I, a school of thought, by the way, that, that he might he would not have hired Mike Leach there. This is from people I've, I've talked to I've over, heard that. The, over the years. Um, and that, but again, that may not mean he wouldn't see him as a fit for this job. I mean, I don't know. Well, he, he made two hires at Washington State. He hired um, Bill Doba, who succeeded, um, oh gosh, uh, Mike Price. Yes. Mike Price had taken Washington State to a Rose Bowl way back when, before he got the Alabama job for about 10 minutes. And, uh, and Bill Doba didn't work out, so he, he fires Doba and he hires Paul Wolf, who was even less successful than, uh, than Bill Doba. Am and I so, remembering right, Blair, is Bill Doba kind of a, a, a Barry Odom parallel? A yeah. Guy, was there, wasn't he a coordinator? Yes. And came up, he was with Mike Price a long time? I think, that, I think that's right. So those two, neither of those hires worked out at Washington State. Now he extended, um, and I knew I shouldn't have brought this up because I can't remember his name, the coach at San Diego State who had had, who had, had success. So, um, uh, so he, if, in terms of hiring football coaches, the track record's not great right now, but that's fine. Look, that, that's, you know, not every coach is great. And athletic directors, they get, uh, they, they do get judged ultimately on their hires. And uh, and this, these high, the, the hires at Washington State didn't prevent, you know, uh, Jim Sterk from getting another job at, uh, you know, at, at San Diego State. So, um, but it, but all of Jim Sterk's jobs before coming to Missouri were out west, right? They were in the Pac-12, the Mountain West Conference, that area. And he doesn't bring – I don't know what his network is or his depth of knowledge with these other guys. I just trust that he, you know, he wouldn't have made this move without having done some legwork, of, especially over the last month as the, as the season started to turn south. And wouldn't have made this move now and wouldn't have made this move coming to Columbia without understanding that this is going to be a, a football um, – I don't know, football-based job is probably the wrong way to put it, but – it's going to heavily revolve around the success of the football program, and he 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 had to be nimble and thoughtful about that. Like that's always going to be something he's got to concentrate on. Okay, so if um, if you if you want if you're looking for the anti Barry Odom, I guess that means um, Alex Grinch is out. Well, except for one interesting twist on who, Alex Grinch, who is the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma. Right, and defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, previously at Ohio State and Washington State and Washington State. So there's some interesting interesting background there, but you're right, on, at least in the sort of, not even superficial, in the, in the basic profile, it, it's, it's Barry Odom, except for the godfather factor in this, right? Or the uncle. He's the, he's the nephew um, of Gary Pinkle. He's and, the son of Gary Pinkle's sister. And there are those, I've heard from plenty of people the last couple of days particularly, there are those who really would tell you that one of Barry's... Um, Part of his undoing was disconnect from Pinkle. And obviously, Alex Grinch would enjoy a different kind of relationship with Gary Pinkle, um, which I think leaves him as still somebody to think about um, in, in just because of that. All right. Well, I'm going to give you another group of names, and I'm going to save the, the one that I think would be my favorite. If, if I had to guess who the next Missouri coach is going to be on a pie graph, this this person would have the largest slice of pie. But smaller slices of pie would go to Billy Napier, who's the Louisiana coach, um, Mike Norvell, who's at Memphis, who I think might end up at either Florida State or Arkansas, Luke Fickett of, um, of mm -hmm. Cincinnati, right. who's never coached outside of Ohio, basically, and is kind of seen as a Big Ten sort of guy. Uh, Brian Harsom, the, the Boise State coach, who is, you know, a, a, a you know Boise guy, Northwest guy, but I think a, a future star a, as a coach, and then Lane Kiffin, 
um, who's getting a lot of run at, at Arkansas, reportedly met with Arkansas officials in Boca Raton on Sunday, according to Dan Walken at USA Today. So that's my group of head coaches at, uh, I also had Troy Calhoun from Air Force in that group originally. He actually talked to Missouri and Mac Rhodes back four years ago. Um, so there's, there's a sort of a group of, uh, of coaches that are head coaches, group of five conference schools, and, um, and I think other schools would be interested in, interested in some of those guys, Florida State, Arkansas, Ole Miss. Um, it may be a run, but I'm saving the guy who I think is the best candidate until I hear you guys' thoughts on future coaches. Well, let me, it, and, I'll, and, I'll, if you, and if you say it, uh, say it, and I'll, I'll recognize it. I won't say it, but um, uh, not because I know who you're thinking of, just because I know who I'm about to mention. Um, Rocky Long was the guy that you're thinking Rocky of. Rocky Long think, at from, San Diego State. From, I had to look State. it up. I'm yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm not going <laughs> to. You know what? I remember his name was There's Rocky, no heirs here. but I didn't want to. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, but the other thing I wanted to say is um, Lane Kiffin, um, I sort of had dismissed in my mind initially just you know screw that guy like you know he's failed like mizzou is is too big of a job for him but the more that i've looked into him the more i think he's he might be a hell of a hire uh he, he got fired from tennessee for going seven and six basically which right? is what kind of the tennessee standard of yep you know. <laughs> and and he was you know he's probably too young at that point um but he he took that usc was a tough job when, when he took it and he won 10 games there a few times, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and built that back up after, you know, pretty, some pretty severe, um, you know, recruiting restrictions and, and everything else that came in from a overstepping that I'm just editorializing here, but from the NCAA and then, uh, you know, FAU, like, I mean, he, he's, you know, not, sort to, of, not to mention the NFL. You know? Yeah. He's got experience there. Didn't, yeah. didn't do <laughs> amazingly, right. but, uh, the Raiders have been a mess before and after that. Um, I think that he would, again, if we can go back to this point about like there's two boxes to check, initial, you know, interest into the program and, you know, some actual substance. Because I don't think you can't just make a, a sizzle higher. I think that's like overextending on your credit card. You know, it, it feels good in the moment, but there's a bill to pay later. Uh, but I think Lane Kiffin really could check both those boxes. So, I, you know, to me, um, I, I also like the idea of is, is it Joe Brady? The LSU, um, you know, kind Coord- of yeah. coordinator yeah. Yeah. passing game. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe take a chance on somebody like that. Of, of it, it, no previous head coaching experience. He, so that's, he's going to be a head coach somewhere. Absolutely. So, but it seems like Jim Sterk really wants somebody who's done the job before. Um, so maybe he's not a realistic candidate. But that's I'd think about somebody like him again. Take a big swing at, at Mike Leach and see if he has any interest. Um, but you know, I, I think those three would be who you know, kind of the directions that that, that I would think about. I. I really like what what each of you guys has said about all these guys. I don't I don't know what I would add. I, I feel like it, it's a Rubik's cube. Um, you know, a guy I was just reading up, reminding myself about Steve Sarkeesian, um, but, but he had he had a little bit of trouble at USC. That that um, I I don't know if that that takes him off the radar or not. But he's offensive coordinator at Alabama now, mm-hmm. um, and and he's Armenian. <laughs> um, Boom! And, I, and, I, and he knows some Armenian. I once <laughs> threw some at him when I was out at USC for something. So, no, so no I, I don't really know what else to add to that. I keep thinking less about a specific person than about trying to um, sort of apply the profile. And, it, and that hasn't gotten me to the person yet that I, I really think it'll be. Um, one of the things I've been trying to think about with the profiling is, is a little different point, and it may be irrelevant, but so Missouri's now fired six of six of the seven coaches it's had since Dan Devine left to go to the Green Bay Packers. It's had a couple. And the, the um, one who wasn't fired re- retired because of illness. Yeah. You know, good, right. Gary so he, and you know, I guess you'd say he left prematurely, yeah. one way or another. And, um, but so they've had, you know, the, the true sons. They've had, I mean, Honor Frio essentially, uh, Woody Widenhofer, Barry. Um, they've had the guy in the country, Bob Stull. I mean, he was everybody's ambition at that time. Uh, then they had Larry Smith, who was out of coaching for a year or two. Speaking of Southern, losing, former Southern yeah. Cal coaches. So the one guy who's worked is is a little different on the matrix, right? It is the the Mac coach. I guess the, theoretically Bob Stull was from about that 
you know, coming from UTEP. Um, Bob, I think, didn't get the landscape properly, uh, at least not in time. Right. Gary, right. Gary did, and how you differentiate you know, knowing whether somebody gets it is another is yeah. another matter. Well, I'm going to give you a name of somebody who who does understand it because he's coached in it. And I also think that having some SEC coaching experience is important for uh, for this person because again, as we if we've stated, the SEC is just a different animal. He has Missouri experience. He has head coaching experience. He has had a couple of teams that have been wildly successful. Um, Josh Heupel. So Josh is out there, and we know that he's. You know, he, he left Missouri two years ago to become the head coach at Central Florida, and he is offensive-minded. He, um, he, he really proved to me, worked with Drew Locke, is you know, better than Derek Dooley, I, su- I suppose. You know, Drew Locke was the all-SEC quarterback in, in uh, fi- what proved to be Heupel's final season at, at, um, at Mizzou. And after going 12-0 and and losing to LSU in a Fiesta Bowl, I think it was 12-0, and maybe 13-0 his first year, I think he's 9-3 and this year. And and head into another you know, bowl game, I think he is ambitious and, um, and, and would, would t- I think he would take the job. Now, the, the little, little bit of hesitation I have is, you know, Josh Heupel was an All-America quarterback at Oklahoma, and if Lincoln Riley ends up moving on somewhere uh, quickly, you know, taking the Cliff Kingsbury route to the NFL, then maybe that's the job, Josh Heupel. I would imagine Oklahoma would target him as well. But if you're Missouri, maybe you'd, you'd take a hard look at Josh Heupel. Well, you, yes, um, you make a lot of great points there. I, I think that um, a reason not to hire somebody can't be he might leave for Oklahoma, you know, because as, as much as I think Missouri should be shooting at bigger fish than Arkansas, I think we also understand that Oklahoma is going to take who Oklahoma wants, you know, especially a, an alum. Um, I hadn't thought that much about Hypo. That's um, he can win there, though. I mean, Central Florida is one of those weird paths to, you know, sort of. I don't know if we still use this term, but you know, New Year's Day bowls. You know, you you can get there from Central Florida, and there's probably a logical case that it's harder to do in a conference like the SEC than it is from Central Florida. Um, but man, I. It, you're right. Like he's got all the connections, you know. Spent what, time in Columbia. What's funny is we had talked about him before, and he just wasn't in my mind at all until you brought him back up, and you brought him back up in a pretty powerful way. I mean, I, 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 that's a pretty striking profile for this. Yeah. One question I would have, unless I'm forgetting, I, he hasn't been a head coach before this. Before until Central, Central Florida. Florida. That's right. So we, he's been through just two a couple, just a couple years, but but that gives him two more years than Barry Odom had. It does, yeah. but but it does leave that question open about. A full recruiting cycle, um, you know what what's what's he got for that? And I don't know one way or another whether he, he's a good recruiter. It's or, a good or point, not. Um, but it's just a thing. Now, a lot of these other guys we talked about, we might not have really seen that answered. And if we're talking about Group of Five, we're not seeing it answered at this same level too. So there's going to be questions about anybody. But that uh, that that profile, as you described it, before even saying his name, it's pretty compelling. Would he be the kind of hire that might sell, you know, 5,000 season tickets on the day it's announced? I don't know if there's a ton of yeah. sizzle there. I don't know if there would be either. I don't think so. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it would be like that. But I think you could sell him. Yeah, I think you could sell him. I think he could, you know, I'll do the air quotes around win the press conference for what that's worth. But then it's going to be proof in the pudding for a couple of years. I don't know what this team, that's the other thing. No matter who the coach is, I don't really have a feel for what this team is poised to do next year. I, I just don't know. Well, well the the, um, the freshman quarterback just was it Achilles? Yes. Yeah. So oh no, uh, was it Achilles or ACL? Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember. Um, Connor uh, Basilak. Yeah. Uh, but he's he's obviously not going to start this. You know, won't be out there in the spring. So um, they still have the Sean Robinson, the the TCU transfer. So um, yeah, I don't I don't know either. But it's going to be an interesting spring at Missouri. Just as it was this past spring for Kansas and Kansas, Kansas State and Kansas, let's let's wrap this up by just a quick thought on both of those. The regular season's over for both of those schools as well. Um, let's well, let's give a grade here for how about the the Kansas State season and the Kansas season. 
with um, Chris Kleiman at K State, eight and four, heading to a bowl game, and and Les Miles at KU, three and nine, not going to a bowl game. But uh, let's start with K State. Let's let's give let's just give it a grade for let's let's give K State a grade for this season. I'm I'm happy to give an A here. I mean, remember they were pick, picked for whatever that's worth ninth ninth yep. in the, in the conference. He's taken over for a legend. Program was in a little bit of a funny place. Couldn't quite tell where the talent was, and this guy just energized it. Had a plan. Um, played, you know, I think pretty fundamentally sound football that's pleasing to the K-State fan. Right? Of course, more pleasing when you win. Um, I don't think I don't think this is what people would have expected this season. Maybe you would have hoped for it. Um, I, and and I think also. It's not really just about this season. I think you can feel the energy from this guy that, that this is going to be something with some continuity. What do you think, Sam? I was going to say A minus, um, just to leave some room, you the, know, because what if he went nine and three right, or the ten West, and two? The West Virginia loss kind of the yeah. Oklahoma win was offset by the West Virginia yeah, loss. Yeah, yeah, there, there were some sort of uh, I can't think of another term, the growing pains. But I mean, there were some. It wasn't just an avalanche, but um, I mean that Oklahoma win was the biggest win that that program had had in several years. Uh, and, and that's the kind of thing that you can take straight to recruits, you know, and, and you can sell the hell out of that. Um, I, I also, um, you know, th- that's the headliner from the season, but I think the Iowa State win, um, I, I think that's important too, that you finish the season that way. And I think that Iowa State is, is basically a peer program. Um, I think K-State is probably on a maybe a half a step above, but whatever. Like basically a peer program in the conference and to keep that win in a coach's first year, um, to, to win more games than the legendary coach did in his last season that you're replacing. Um, I just think that, you know, I, I'm saying A minus and that's a great grade, right? But um, I would love my kids to get A minuses forever. But, um, <laughs> you know, I just, there, there's a little bit of, you're right, West Virginia, um, you still lost four games. Uh, but I, I just don't know how you can not be encouraged by what, what he did in his first year. I just remember thinking as the season was starting, he always had better players at North Dakota State. What's, yeah. what's it going to be like when he doesn't have players as good yep. as the ones he's – and he beats Oklahoma. Yep. So that showed me the cho- the coaching chops. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so I'm I'm with you guys. At the uh, A A minus either way, I, I, I won't quibble. I, I just think he did an outstanding job. He won't be coach of the year in the conference because of Matt Rule and Baylor they were picked down. You know, Matt Rule. <laughs> uh, look, <laughs> I, how long is he that guy going to be at yeah. Baylor? Um, he's already you know he's talked to the NFL each of the last two years. But man, that guy um, he'll he'll be on some hot boards. Mm-hmm. Hot boards. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, let's start with you, Sam, on on KU three and nine. Uh, one and eight in the conference, last place again for the Jayhawks. I get a little different feeling though about where we are with Kansas after this season. Yeah, um, so maybe this is harsh, um, but I'm going to say C minus, which is uh, that's not harsh. Um, passing grade, um, but they didn't win more games than David Beatty did in his last year, right? Uh, you know, and David Beatty won a conference game last year. And Beat TCU at home. Yeah, and, and so I know, like, you know, that there was some – it felt like real stuff with the Texas game, you know, taking them down to the wire, and then uh, – uh, Boston College game early in the, the season. Yeah, that BC, the blowout. Um, and, and then – but I still wanted to see what they could do in the conference. And when they did, when they did Texas um, – and he, I know I know they lost the game, and but the, still. And then Iowa State toward the end as well, when they had the lead in the fourth yep, quarter of yep. the game, so. and won a game, kind of a fluky play, but still won a game in the league. Um, I thought, oh, okay, like you know, there's some real stuff going. But that Baylor game, I, they were outmatched, but that's hard to get out of your mind of just getting slobbered like that. I mean, just absolutely just soul crushed. Like I mean, that, that, that looked like you know David Beatty's worst game or Turner Gill's worst game, and and you know so. Look, C minus, um, I, I think is fair. Um, it, it's a passing grade, but it's a you know you got to prove more than that. What what is that on the GPA scale? What's a that's, <laughs> is, that, is that like a one point eight? Uh... I don't know. It's it's a seventy <laughs> percent. I, I do know my C minuses from you know college wasn't that long ago that I can't remember <laughs> what I needed to get for a for a C minus. A gentleman's grade, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a gentleman's C yeah. minus. Not showing off. <laughs> yeah. Not falling too far behind. I think we all like that. <laughs> What do you um, think, Bob? I, you know, I, I, I'll creep up just a little tick to like a C plus. 
um, because I do think there's a different energy about it. But a lot of that's just sort of the vestiges of the early part of the season. I Mm -hmm. mean, the way they went out. And the thing that summed up the season for me was um, the K-State game. Just got drilled mm-hmm. in a game where you've got the stands full in Lawrence. This yeah. is your your moment to point. to show you've come somewhere, and they just aren't there. Um, I think Sam has sort of identified this for a while. That I mean, the the play here with Les Miles was never going to be about the first season, right? But, yeah. but you want to have a little more, you know, substance going into next next mm-hmm. year, and at, 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 they don't. Um, that said, I, I, I assume we're going to see better players there in the next year or two, and, and uh, let, let's see what comes. I think you're, you have reason to be more optimistic than you were a year ago. I'll yeah. say a C, just uh, for the reasons you guys uh, mentioned, there were some, some real highs. They had, that Boston College win was unlike anything we'd seen mm-hmm. for Kansas, and, and it was coming off that really disappointing, the, the pinata game of Coastal <laughs> <Yeah>. Carolina. <laughs> I still love that. Yeah. Turned it into a verb. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the, the part of the part of this too um, is Dearman. The 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 OC kind of seemed to change. You know, was given credit for you know they they ran a lot of RPOs in that BC game and right. Um, you then, know, scoring, then he got the job on the full time basis. Yeah, and scored. What was the final fifty to forty eight? I think game? it was something like yeah. I think it was in that certainly but, in that range. Maybe forty eight, forty five, or something. Yeah, scored a boatload of points right. on on a nationally ranked. You know, so um, but again that that. That, that Baylor game, maybe I should get that out of my head. But you know, if if you're a program trying to build up, and again, I understand like you ran into a buzzsaw, and the other side had better players and everything, but um, at least give a better effort. You know, at least you know lose by 25 or something. You know, not a thousand. Well, at least with Kansas now, I guess three wins is the baseline. You, now you go from here. You're not going. You're not yeah. starting with zero yeah. or one. That's you're true. starting with three. Yeah. And now you, you need to see improvement at Kansas. Now it's got to get up to close to bowl eligibility, yep. uh, beginning next year. As far you know, as far as Kansas fans should should be concerned. All right, Vahe Gregorian, Sam Mellinger, thanks for stopping by, you guys. Thanks, Blair. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks, Blair. That does it for another episode of Sports BKC, presented by Big O Tires. And it concludes the podcast duties of our producer, Leah Becerra. She's on her way to a terrific job at the Neiman Foundation. She'll be working at Harvard as the organization's digital and audience engagement editor for the foundation and its publications. Look, it's no sports BKC, but... No, just kidding, Leah. You're the nicest marathon running former geek squatter I ever met, and you will be missed. Best of luck in Boston. Links to our stories can be found in the show notes, and we'll be back on Wednesday for another Sports BKC, where we talk sports in Kansas City every day.